In the beginning, my teacher was my mother. She was the greatest teacher. And then I became a Jain monk. So I learned walking around India and, and as a monk. And so that was my education. Then I joined a great, um, a great man, great philosopher uh, called Vinoba Bhave. He was a great Gandhian uh, man, scholar, Sanskrit scholar but also a social reformer. So I walked with him uh, uh, in India. And so that was my education with him. I learned Sanskrit, I learned Upanishads, I learned Vedas, I learned Gita, I learned Hindu philosophy. So Jain philosophy I learned from the Jain teachers and Hindu philosophy I learned from the Hindu teacher, Vinoba Bhave. And then I uh, went around the world walking for 8,000 miles, for two and a half years. So that was my real university. Two and a half years, walking through Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Russia, Belarusia, Poland, Germany, Belgium, France. Then I sailed across the Atlantic, and then America, Japan, and back. So two and a half years, that was my real uh, PhD, real uh, um, MA, real MSc, real, uh, real education. Uh, I did not have a certificate, but I got good education. So that was the university of life, that university of nature, and there was a book of nature. And then I came back and, uh, and I wrote one or two books, and uh, I had met Martin Luther King during that journey. And so Martin Luther King gave me one of his books as a kind of present, a memento. And so when I came back to India, I said, he has given me this book, now this is my duty to introduce uh, Martin Luther King's ideas to Indian audience. So I translated that book into Hindi and was published. So that was the first Martin Luther King's book published in India, in Hindi. And so uh, then I went back to uh, the uh, United Kingdom and uh, there I met E.F. Schumacher. And at that time, E.F. Schumacher was editing a magazine called Resurgence. And, uh, and uh, he was a very busy man working for the National Coal Board and writing books and doing lectures and so on. So he wanted me to become the editor of Resurgence magazine. And I said, no, no, Mr. Schumacher, I want to go back to India. And so he said, why do you want to go back to India? I said, I want to go back to India because I want to work with the Gandhian movement, with Vinoba Bhave and the Gandhian movement. Um, so Schumacher said, but Satish, there are many Gandhians in India. We need one in England. <laughs> and so please stay and edit Resurgence magazine and make it a Gandhian magazine. And so he was very persuasive. <laughs> I said to him that, all right, if I become the editor, will you contribute in every issue of Resurgence? And after a moment of thought, he said, all right, that's the deal. You become the editor, I'll be a regular contributor. And together we'll make the magazine. And so I stayed in England. And when Schumacher passed away, uh, I, in his honor, I started two projects. One called The Small School for children age 11 to 16. And the second project I started called Schumacher College. And that was for uh, adults. Uh, so where we offer courses uh, which are short-term courses, like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and also long-term courses, whole year, where you can get a master's degree in holistic science, in holistic economics, in horticulture, and many other uh, subjects like that. And so these two projects I want to speak a little bit about. What is the idea behind starting a small school? and a college. Um, the idea behind was that mainstream education is about brain, <clears throat> education of the head. You learn uh, intellectual ideas. But we are not just our head. 
we are our whole body. So how you can have education of the whole body and whatever faculties we have in our whole being. And so uh, I said, in, in England we say, uh, every school must teach three R's. Reading, writing, arithmetic. They don't even know how to spell. Because <laughs> there are no three R's. But uh, I said, but three R's are all very academic. Just all the only head. We want to have education which is head, heart, and hands. The kind of body representing head, thinking, knowledge, ideas, <coughs> academic information. So you can learn all those subjects. But we also want to learn, teach children how to feel, how to relate. Because after all, like your father would say, we are all related. We are all connected. We are all made of each other. So if we don't feel each other, we don't respect each other, we don't serve each other, we don't take care of each other, how can we be related? So recognizing our interrelatedness and our interconnectedness and our interdependence, we need to feel. So we need to include in our curriculum and syllabus certain amount of uh, learning to feel and learning to appreciate and learning to celebrate. So those were the heart qualities, spiritual qualities. And then we should teach also something to do with hand. All our children come out of schools and out of universities. They don't know how to build a house. They don't know how to grow food. They don't know how to cook food. They don't know how to make clothes. They don't know how to make shoes. They don't know how to make a chair. They are coming out of universities, in my view, completely useless. Completely useless. They don't know anything to do. Only the, the only thing they are taught to do is to sit in front of a computer nowadays and, and do some mathematics and some logical things, some intellectual things, some management, some office work, some clerk work. The whole of our creativity, our imagination, our making, our building, our being engaged in day-to-day -day life, our education does not address that issue. So at the small school, which I started first in 1982, which is still going very well. And, and I started with nine children. And first day, I said that our education will start with kitchen. The kitchen is the center of the school. And the school is your home. It's not a school, it's a home. From home to home. You feel home. You make a community with children. You make a community with your teachers. You make a community with your, your uh, parents. So you are a community, you are a home. So every child will join, participate in learning how to cook nice, delicious, delightful, enjoyable meal for the real. And then we'll share the meal together. All the teachers and all the students and all the guests and parents who come, they all share a meal together. And it should be a good food. You cannot have good education on bad diet. Good education can only happen with good food. When you have a good food, you are happy, you are healthy, your body is good, your mind is good, then you will learn, you will enjoy. If you have bad food, you are all day ah, miserable, you are not going to concentrate on your learning. So food became very important. So every child, every day, fresh bread is baked, fresh salad, fresh soup, every day, good food. When you go in the school and you are sitting in the classroom, already you are smelling the good smell of the kitchen coming out. So that was one thing. Then I said, now we want to learn something with your hands, with, in addition to cooking, and that is gardening. So we established a garden. So when children can see how a tiny seed, like a tomato seed, how little seed tomato is, you put in a little, little, um, what do you call it, little uh, uh, gambla, pot. Pot. little pot, little yeah. pot, and you put that, and that in a few days it comes out like a little, a little uh, sampling, yeah. And then you take that out and you put it in the soil. And in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, it's a big uh, plant and creeping, climbing, and then flowers. And then out of that one seed, flowers. And then out of flowers, this transformation, magic. 
some fruit coming and that green fruit and then suddenly overnight somebody is painting that fruit and it's becoming yellow and then from yellow it's becoming red and suddenly it's juicy, it's delicious. Ah, from that one seed, that experience, children experiencing that transformation of biological transformation, of physical transformation, of uh, gardening, that is a great experience. I think children should have experience. This tomato does not come from a packet. Tomato doesn't come from a supermarket. Tomato doesn't come from a tin. Tomato comes from the soil. And when you put your hands in the dirt and you touch the soil and feel the soil and plant the seed and see the seed becoming a tree, see the uh, seed becoming a plant, that experience is part of education. Education is not only about reading books, but education is also about experiencing life. And so gardening. Is, and my uh, aim uh, in England is that every British school, and in India we are saying in every Indian school there must be a garden. Children should have football, they have cricket, they have swimming pools, they have science labs, but no garden. Why not? If you can have a football pitch, you can have a cricket pitch, you can have a science lab, you can have a swimming pool, you can also have a garden. So every school must have a garden if it is a good school, in my view. Mm -hmm. So we started with school and then I said, we also teach children any other handicrafts, pottery, woodwork, building work, um, photography, painting, music, all the art. Art is also heart. Art and heart go together. So education of heart requires uh, to develop your imagination. If children don't learn their imagination, how to, to, um, to develop your imagination, then what is good of learning all the kind of facts and figures and computers and this and that and so on? So imagination is a heart quality. And when you are able to imagine, you manifest with your hands. It's a manifestation. So you take a lump of clay and transform it with your imagination, a beautiful pot. That's an alchemy. I mean, alchemy is not only uh, turning base metal into gold. Alchemy for me is that any ordinary thing transforming into extraordinary. So you take a piece of clay and you turn it into a beautiful pot. You look at this house, it's a work of alchemy, it's a bamboo. It's an ordinary bamboo, ordinary mud, ordinary everything. And they have put it all together. It's a lovely room. It's a handmade room. This is a real creative room. How many houses you get this in New Delhi? Exception. A majority of houses are assembled by machines and by cranes and by, um, by all sorts of uh, things. Uh, builders we don't have anymore. There are no more builders. There are assemblers. We have lost the art of building. And when we are assembling, we create ugly cities. New Delhi, Mumbai, London, <coughs> Tokyo, New York, all the built uh, cities. There is very little aesthetic, very little beauty, very little sense of pleasure and joy. When you go to Gurgaon, you see all these structures of cement and concrete and glass and steel. There's no joy there. There's no pleasure. I said to my friends who was taking me to Gurgaon, for dinner, I said, look, we built big, big structures in the past. Lal Kila, the Red Fort, Taj Mahal, mm, uh, kind of pyramids, big, big structures we built. But we built them beautifully. When you go in a Red Fort or Taj Mahal, such big building, they took time. They took uh, imagination. So I want our education to be as practical as theoretical. And the same principle I applied to the small uh, to the Schumacher College. Schumacher College, where uh, people come and live there, and I also say this is not an institution; it is a home. M live here as you will live at home, and feel at home. And and cooking is part of home making. Gardening is part of home making. Um, cleaning, washing up, uh, clean the toilets, uh, making the bed, all these are part of education. Education is not only in the classroom when you are uh, listening lectures or watching uh, some kind of video or DVD and getting some uh, intellectual information. That is okay. I'm all in favor of it. We get wonderful teachers. We get um, people like uh, uh, Wendell Berry uh, was there for five weeks and James Lovelock and Lynn Margulis, and uh, Fritz Jok Capra, and um, all these people come, James Hillman. People come and teach. We honor them, our teachers are great, but only words and only intellectual learning is not enough. 
So we have incorporated in this uh, Schumacher College practical learning. So intellectual learning, practical learning, and feeling, heart feeling. So for the, uh, so in a way, it is in honor of Schumacher, because um, Schumacher was my kind of friend and mentor, and his book Small is Beautiful, but also Guide for the Perplex, and, and his idea of everything interrelated, and how we understand that unless we connect with each other, and we connect with other things. So this way, I have created two educational projects, uh, which are very, very sort of going very well, and uh, and then magazine is also an educational uh, work. Um, resurgence now merged with the ecologist, mm -hmm. so ecologist and resurgence have they become, become one magazine, and uh, and because Teddy Goldsmith, who was founder of the ecologist, passed away, and then the magazine was bitter in a doldrum. So we said, let's merge two together and uh, bring the environmental and, 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 uh, and the creative movement together. And so Resurgence and Ecologist magazine, which I edit now, is educational publication. And uh, it's published by a not-for-profit educational charity. And so our work is to uh, bring uh, these ideas to as large numbers of people on a regular basis. Every two months, the magazine comes out. So this way, uh, what I wanted to share with you is a kind of my own life story in terms of educational. So the, how I started, uh, without going to school, without going to university, I learned a lot. And I learned from people. I learned from my teachers. I learned from nature. For me, nature is the greatest teacher. And my mother even used to say that nature is even greater teacher than the Buddha. And I said to my mother, I was only eight years old when she said it, I said, Mother, that can't be true. There's nobody greater teacher than the Buddha. And then mother would say, but all right, tell me, where did Buddha get his enlightenment? And I said, when he was sitting under a tree. Said, there you are. When he was sitting under a tree, he observed the tree, he observed the sunshine relating to the tree, he observed the rain uh, in harmony with tree, he observed the soil in harmony with tree, he saw the birds nesting on the tree, all interconnected, codependent arising, all that information he got by observing the tree and nature. So nature was even Buddha's teacher. So that was my mother's logic, <laughs> simple logic. <laughs> she was not educated either. She could not read, write, or sign, but she knew stories. She could sing, she could uh, talk, she could philosophize without reading and writing. So reading and writing has become a bit too important in our time. We think reading and writing is everything. Reading and writing is only a tool. Depends on what you are reading and how you are reading and why you are reading. And, and, uh, and you can learn more than uh, one way. There are more than one way of knowing. And reading is one way, but the other way of serving. When you serve, you learn. When you listen, you learn. When you are silent, you learn. When you are walking, you learn. When you are cooking, you learn. There are many, many ways of learning. And we have reduced one way of learning, and that is schooling. This is why another friend of mine, Ivan Illich, and he wrote a wonderful book called Deschooling Society. And, uh, and, and that is that we, education does not mean schooling. Education means to bring out, educare, the Latin word educare is to bring out what is in the child. Like a gardener, a forester, um, uh, an orchard keeper has a mango seed. So the, the tree is already in the seed. The gardener does not put mango tree in the seed. This mango tree is in the seed. His work is only, or her work is only, to get the right soil, get the right compost, get the right fencing, to get the right watering, all those ingredients supporting the seed to become what it is. Bring out, unfold, emerge what is its nature. So that is education. Education, the teacher has to understand what is this child? Who is this child? What is the potential of this child? How can I bring this child to be who she or he is? That is the work of the uh, educator, um, the teacher. But at the moment, teachers think the child is completely uh, ignorant, like an empty bucket. Now, I have to put um, science in, into it. I have to put literature into it. I have to put some other information into it. So, filling the basket, that is the kind of uh, empty basket. 
So that is not the word education. Education is to bring out, to lead out. So the work of educators is to discover the potential of every child. And so um, I wanted to share the story with you that we can all be educators. My mother was not a trained teacher, but she was my teacher. She was educator. So you are all educators, and we educate each other. So uh, let's liberate educational system from this very narrow confine of schooling and universities and exams. And then, and our, I mean, I was talking to one of my friend here who comes from a city called Kota. Kota is in Rajasthan, where I come from. It was a beautiful old town, and uh, it's all right, it's all right. Um, beautiful old town, and there, now, there are 300,000 young people studying in this kind of uh, knowledge factories, called colleges, knowledge factories. Mm -hmm. And they are all learning the same thing to pass exam. At the end, they come like sausages. Same, same, same. That's not education. And our country, India, is now going through that kind of education, which we have basically learned from the Western system of education. And so um, we need to liberate education from this kind of very narrow confine of knowledge. And you have been to uh, Shanti Niketan. Rabindranath Tagore said that education uh, is not only knowledge, but education is knowledge complemented with experience. And experience cannot happen unless you engage with your body, you engage with your heart, you engage with your hands. And when you are engaged, then you experience. And you have to engage through your eyes and look at the trees. You engage with your ears and look at the, uh, and hear the birds singing. You engage with your, your hands and grow the food. You engage. That engagement brings experience. And when knowledge and experience come together, then it becomes education. Enough said. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>